okay good morning so we are starting uh, the third lecture in uh, module number 2 uh, that is uh, it's having four parts so uh, the sub topic one in module number 2 is sensors and actuators this is the biggest part and uh, today's lecture maybe uh, one or two more lectures will be required to finish the topics in sensors and actuators related to vehicles so so far we have seen uh, basic sensor arrangement mainly for electronic engine control we have seen the list of variables to be measured then we have seen mf mass air flow uh, yesterday we have seen lambda oxygen sensor and uh, crankshaft angle position sensor so yesterday we have seen crankshaft as well as uh, camshaft and we have seen some videos so all the videos are uploaded in your google classroom what are the different four strokes uh, in case of the four stroke engine and uh, how camshaft is rotating how crankshaft is rotating so we have found that uh, two rotation of crankshaft that is 720 degree rotates the engine uh, or rotates a uh, piston for one cycle or rotates the camshaft uh, for one 360 degree cycle so all those things was seen yesterday uh, very vivid videos were uploaded and uh, one thing i would like to mention that uh, Uh, you are supposed to come offline for offline classes dcn students are coming so you also people should come uh, as soon as possible so if possible come from for offline classes from tomorrow uh, timetable will be same so whatever we are going to see today is uh, mainly two types of sensors and there are few videos also i have kept today uh, so as we are seeing the videos syllabus is not going forward very fast but at this stage watching videos uh, from youtube for different vehicle systems are very much important so we will see what is meant by throttle position sensor today so this is the last topic first we will see what is throttle position sensor that is whenever we are pushing the accelerator at that time there is a flap which is opening and uh, the uh, air is being sucked by the engine uh, in a very faster rate and that actually is an indication that the driver wants a higher speed uh, from the uh, engine okay so as soon as we are pressing that uh, accelerometer or uh, whatever is accelerator there not accelerometer uh, whenever accelerator is pressed at that time the throttle uh, valve is opening and more air is going into the engine and the engine is started running faster producing higher amount of energy output what kind of sensor we are using there is actually potentiometric sensor so it's a very simple kind of a thing we will see what is that and after that we will see the whole fuel system so here only uh, fuel metering uh, sensor they have asked that is what is that sensor that measures uh, the fuel going inside uh, the engine but uh, i feel uh, the fuel is uh, the thing we are more most connected to for a vehicle so whenever we say it's a vehicle first thing comes to our mind what is the price of petrol today okay so we will see the whole uh, fuel system today starting from the fuel tank uh, then what is the uh, fuel level sensor uh, so it's a capacitive type it can be capacitive type but in case of general cars we are using a, a float type of sensor so it's a float and resistor combination that is sensing how much is the level of fuel uh, inside the tank so you will see that and uh, what are the other uh, sensors that may be related to fuel that also we will see so maybe i'm giving a little bit more time on fuel a uh, storage and metering but it is worth okay so directly i will not be giving you uh, some slides with written material but i'll be showing you a lot of videos from there you will understand how does the fuel system one will be the flow sensor so it can be air flow it can be a uh, liquid flow that is fuel flow and one is vehicle speed sensor these are very simple type of things we can do it tomorrow and uh, tomorrow also we are having a lecture because we missed one on monday compensation will be done tomorrow so target for tomorrow is uh, finishing the actuator part and the remaining sensors okay so this is the target for tomorrow so by tomorrow hopefully we will be able to finish the topic 1 then topic 2 3 4 are there uh, each topic might take 1 to 1 and half days so in another 4 to 5 lectures we will be able to finish module 2 let us first see what is the throttle position or throttle uh, angle sensor okay so it's uh, you can see in the left side this is a potentiometer 
So potentiometer is nothing but a variable resistor. Uh, the best example for potentiometer or variable resistor is uh, uh, the volume control of a radio. Okay, so there is a knob. We rotate it towards the right or rotate it towards the left. Whenever we are rotating towards the right, we are actually changing this wiper position. Okay, so this wiper is actually connected to these resistors. Whenever we are rotating this, this uh, wiper is actually sliding on the resistors. Okay, so here what you can find is, uh, so this potentiometer is given a supply, electric supply, and between these two points, we are getting the output. So below point is connected to the ground, top point is actually connected to the rotating part. So in our case, rotating part will be the accelerator. Whenever we are pressing the accelerator, means what this movable contact or wiper is actually flowing in the anti-clockwise direction or getting rotated in the anti-clockwise direction. So you can see that as soon as this wiper is rotated in the anti-clockwise direction, more number of more amount of uh, resistor is getting touched or connected in the circuit. So in this case, the circuit voltage uh, will be increased. Okay. So if we in this case, if we are rotating this wiper in the clockwise direction, so if this wiper touches here, voltage between these two points will be voltage across short circuit. So voltage will be zero. So for this diagram, if we are rotating this wiper in the anti-clockwise direction, then more voltage will be found between Vs and this point. Okay, likewise. So uh, what actually we are doing in case of throttle position or angle sensor, as we are pressing the, uh, the accelerator, at that time uh, there is a wiper which is sliding on a variable resistor. And depending on the angle position, uh, or pressing of the throttle valve, the resistance is getting increased or getting decreased. So both combinations we can design, it's in our hand. But there is a change in the resistor, uh, there is a delta R with respect to the press on the accelerator. And that change in resistor, so either you can do it in uh, increasing mode or you can do it in decreasing mode, it's up to us. Okay, That is if you are pressing the resistor at that time, voltage is increasing between this point or voltage is decreasing between this point. That is in our hand, it is very easy to design. But main thing is, with respect to the accelerator press, there is a change in the resistor. And that change in the resistor is picked up as a function of how much is the angle changed in the accelerator. And from there, a voltage is generated, and that voltage is actually taken to the ECU, and which gives us uh, the indication that, yes, so there is a uh, change in the throttle action that means uh, the user is asking for more and more power that means the throttle valve has to open it has to suck more amount of uh, air and it will get mixed with the fuel combustion happen compression ha sorry compression happen combustion happen and then exhaust and more power so let us go through what it is saying so i have told you the basic thing uh, how it works uh, let us go through so throttle position full throttle means when accelerator is pressed full Okay, we are asking for maximum power from the vehicle. That is called full throttle. So another important variable for electronic engine control is the throttle plate angular position. So we are actually pressing the accelerator means the throttle plate is changing. Depending on that, uh, air sucked by the engine is increasing. So in most automobiles, the throttle plate is linked mechanically to the accelerator paddle and moves with it. When the driver depresses or presses the accelerator paddle, this linkage causes the throttle plate angle to increase. So we are pressing the accelerator, throttle plate angle is increasing, allowing more air to enter the engine and thereby increasing the, uh, or increasing the engine power more than that, we can say, asking for more power from the engine. So this line is very important. When the driver depresses or presses the accelerator pedal, that time the linkage causes the throttle plate angle to increase, allowing more air to enter the engine. And that by that, I am giving an indication to the engine that I am asking for more power from engine. So in the same time, uh, the fuel injection also has to increase and fuel and air gets mixed with a stoichiometric ratio we have seen yesterday. So best stoichiometric ratio lambda is equal to 1. So when lambda is equal to 1, at that time air as to fuel ratio is uh, 14.7 as to 1. So for 14.7 as to 1, we are finding lambda is equal to 1 best stoichiometric ratio. Measurement of instantaneous throttle angle is important for control purposes. So most throttle angle sensors are essentially potentiometers. I'm calling it as a pot. Okay, as we call it in electronics, pot means potentiometer. 
there is a variable resistor that means the angular uh, position or it can be linear pot also so there is linear uh, variable resistor angular variable resistor both are available best example there is a knob in the radio if you are increasing it if you are decreasing it uh, the wiper is sliding on the resistor that is actually increasing or decreasing the voltage so it's just connected in the voltage divider bias and we are getting more or less voltage that means we are getting volume control there here we are getting the acceleration control in case of throttle valve so a pot consists of a contact so this is the resistor fixed resistor and this is the movable contact which is also called as wiper because it slides on that movable resistor the basis for the throttle angle position sensor is the influence of geometric size and shape on the resistance of a conductive material so uh, the downside is the downside is too much use of uh, this wiper sliding on the resistor so there may be a uh, uh, that uh, uh, whatever resistor is there ghis jata hai okay so there is a wear and tear of that resistor material and there might not be contact between the wiper and the resistor after too 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 many uses so there is a possibility okay in that case we have to change this uh, resistor material and uh, the wiper resistor combination comes together and again there will be a new sensor okay so that is one of the downside the basis for the throttle angle position sensor is the influence of geometric size and the shape of the resistance of the conducting material so here conducting material actually is the resistive material and change of resistor is directly or inversely proportional to the alpha alpha is the angle of throttle position so the design is in our hand so pot is made by connecting so here now uh, potentiometer configuration they are saying pot is made by connecting the movable contact that is a wiper uh, at a pivot pivot point so this is the pivot point at the center okay whose axis is orthogonal to the plane of the conductor okay that means this is uh, this is a uh, conductor is like this axis of this conductor and the uh, this line the reference line or pivot they there should be a 90 degree angle so orthogonal okay if the shaft is mechanically connected to another uh, rotary shaft that is the uh, throttle plate pivot shaft so throttle plate pivot shaft is connected to this potentiometer and both are connected to the accelerator the configuration of this sensor for measuring the angular position alpha of that other shaft so for the throttle uh, plate shaft the potentiometer constitutes a throttle angle sensor in which the voltage v alpha so depending on the alpha the voltage changes alpha means nothing but how much press we have uh, given to the accelerator so it it's given in angular position so depending on alpha the voltage should change okay uh, so v alpha provides a measurement of the throttle angle and thereby yields a measurement of the driver command for the engine power so that's what i told you here it was written that uh, when the driver presses the accelerator the linkage causes the throttle plate angle to increase allowing more air to enter the engine it's okay and thereby increasing engine power so thereby increasing no here demanding for more engine power and more engine power can happen only if with air fuel is also inserted in the uh, engine so that should happen together so here the same thing is said the throttle angle and thereby yields a measurement of the driver demand or driver command of engine power so by pressing the accelerator we are actually raising our demand for more power and the vehicle is uh, obeying our command and more power is generated from the engine and uh, the acceleration is happening vehicle is running faster for digital engine control the voltage v alpha must be converted to digit format uh, by using an adc so whatever voltage is generated from this potentiometer that is taken to a adc analog to digital control there are many different types successive type ramp type uh, flash type adc okay so there are many types uh, so it is taken to the adc and whatever output adc is generating a part of that goes to the ecu as well so there are other vehicular application in which the angle position maximum of 2 pi is therefore measured via potentiometer so this is a throttle position so this cannot be a 10 mark question maximum it can be a 5 mark question what you have to explain is how the potentiometer work and the main line is uh, this uh, potentiometer is actually connected to the throttle plate and this combination is actually controlled by the accelerator okay so this is what you have to tell now there is coming the most important part in the uh, this topic one that is sensors and actuator i feel 
this electronic fuel control configuration system is a very important part in the vehicle. So the primary function of this fuel control is to determine the map Call it 14.7. So, Okay, so there was a network issue, we are back again. So this is the uh, electronic fuel control configuration system. So the main uh, thing is the controller. So there's a microcontroller ECU unit. This is actually control engine. This is controlling EPS, CPS, ECS, everything. And this is the EGO. Uh, so the Lambda sensor is there in EGO. TPS is the throttle position sensor. MF is the uh, whatever mass airflow rate. So this is throttle position and this is mass airflow. Then there will be uh, fuel injectors and other thing and this is the ignition part and this is engine so depending on this MAF TPS uh, depending on this EGO that is how much is the exhaust air as to fuel ratio and all these things so there are mainly four inputs which are going toward uh, the ECU so one is coming from EGO another is coming from ECS another is coming from MAF that is a mass airflow another is coming from throttle position depending on all of them uh, just taking all these inputs together, ECS, uh, ECU, that is the electronic control unit, it is actually regulating how much should be the fuel control, that is the ignition control. And here, actuators and all those things are there. They are actually allowing fuel to the engine and engine at engine air and fuel are getting mixed and it is actually uh, producing the energy. And EGO is the exhaust and our uh, lambda sensor is put in the exhaust. And uh, here, uh, all the things are written. So here, there's a very important slide. Uh, it's, it shows all the components of the electronic fuel control configuration system. So first thing is throttle position sensor. It is here. So there's an inlet air. So this you have to explain. And this can be asked in the exam as a 10 mark question. I have just shown you the uh, what are the blocks. But what all blocks you can see, uh, around 9 to 10 blocks you'll be finding here. You have to explain the functioning of each and every block. So electronic fuel control configuration or electronic fuel control system, explain in detail. That can be the question. And in case of controller, you have to write this is ECU, that is electronic control unit. So what are their throttle position sensor? Just now it is told to you. Mass airflow sensor. So it's a 
uh, heated wire actually so that heated wire resistance change as far as the rate of the air flow inside the mass air flow sensor you have to explain that fuel injector so there is a total fuel and ignition system i think there is the fourth topic in this uh, module we will see in detail what is the fuel injector what is the ignition system uh, exhaust so this two three and four we will see in the ignition exhaust gas oxygen sensor ego we have seen that what is that so that is a uh, kind of lambda sensor engine coolant sensor so coolant we have not studied uh, so engine coolant sensor ecs we have to study so whenever the engine is running with full throttle huge amount of energy is produced so engine is getting heated up so i'll tell you almost 6000 rpm the engine runs at full throttle at certain times so just imagine 6000 revolution per minute okay so in per second it is uh, almost 10 times the uh, shafts and all these things are rotating so huge amount of uh, uh, power is uh, produced in the form of heat so that's why cooling of the engine is very much important so that ecs is there so rate of cooling and circulation also should be increased depending on the heat produced inside the engine so ecs it's fundamental we will see uh, engine position sensor all those things so we have seen already the crankshaft position sensor yesterday camshaft position sensor so crank and cam they are two different things but they have to work in unison okay and i told you that two rotation of crank produces one rotation of cam okay not produces but they are related one rotation of cam is related to two rotations of crankshaft so almost all the sensors and finally exhaust gas uh, recirculation actuator so there is a actuator egr so this actuator we will see so what we have not studied so far we have not studied egr because actuator we have not studied camshaft crankshaft position sensor we have seen so engine position sensor is same as uh, crankshaft position sensor coolant we have not studied so point number 6934 so apart from this 3469 remaining five sensors we have studied so it is said in that EPS, that is EPS is nothing but engine position control or engine position sensor. It can measure the angular speed and angular position of the crankshaft. So I told you that EPS is nothing but crankshaft sensor. When it is used in engine uh, in conjunction with the precise electronic clock of the microcontroller. So whatever microcontroller is there, ECU, there has to be a microcontroller and it is having its own clock period and all. So microcontroller works with a certain uh, time. So there is a crystal oscillator which produces the time and depending on all those timing cycles all the acts of microcontroller are uh, timed properly so camshaft position sensor typically generates a timing pulse for each camshaft revolution uh, the combination of eps and cps so what is cps cps is nothing but uh, camshaft position sensor and eps is nothing but crankshaft position sensor so the combination of EP and, uh, eps and cps yields a measured reading the engine angular position for each cylinder okay the cps sensor is required in four stroke engine cycle since each cycle involves two complete crankshaft revolution so two uh, rotation of uh, uh, crankshaft produces one rotation of camshaft signal from various sensors enable the controller that is the ecu to determine the correct fuel flow in fuel ratio should be 14.7 as to 1. From, from this circulation, correct fuel delivery is regulated via FI. So FI is nothing but fuel injector, which is here. Okay. So here, from here, MAF and all it is coming to FI. From here, the actuation is coming to FI. So together, they are injected in the engine. And that injection is happening uh, in the valves, which are controlled by the camshaft at the top. So yes, at the top of the uh, that chamber. Uh, combustion chamber and all so two valves are coming one was giving the air fuel mixture inside it another was giving uh, another was giving another was taking out the exhaust from it okay so uh, it's everything has to happen in a very uh, good uh, cyclical fashion and timed fashion a little bit here and there will disrupt the overall system so from this calculation that uh, signal from various sensors enable the ECU to determine the correct fuel flow in relation to the air flow and to obtain lambda is equal to 1. So lambda is equal to 1 we are sensing at the exhaust. Okay. So starting from the uh, input side till the output side everywhere sensors are fitted uh, to monitor and to make, give the best performance from the engine. 
So how the uh, in input material should be obtained, that is mass airflow, fuel sensor, flow sensor, all those things are there. And when the exhaust is going out through the exhaust, there also sensor is kept so just to check if the exhaust gases are as per the stoichiometric ratio or not. Okay, so engine is the most important thing. Like our heart, heart is the most important thing for the body. So that's why ECG and all these things uh, gives us the best indication whether heart is working properly or not. So from this calculation, correct fuel delivery is regulated via the fuel injector FI. Optimum ignition timing is determined and appropriate timing pulses are sent to the uh, ignition module. Okay, so spark plug control, ignition module control, IGN control, all these things are very much important. So there are so many closed loops, there are so many things that happens in unition uh, when the car runs. Okay, so proper running, proper functioning of the engine requires a lot of things. So next we will go and we will mainly be seeing some videos in the coming half an hour. Okay, so fuel related sensing, what I have found out, so there can be three to four different types of sensing. First one is fuel level sensing in the fuel tank. Okay, so it's a, a float kind of mechanical sensor which is again connected to a resistive potentiometer. So we'll find there's a float which can uh, go up and down depending on the uh, fuel level inside the fuel tank. So when the fuel tank is totally filled up, at that time the float will be at the top. Okay, so our indicator, digital indicator, uh, kata indicator should be towards the right or it will be showing if you are seeing about the status bar whenever the fuel tank is full at that time the float will go on the top and the status bar will show all the dandy uh, bolte hum look so all the things will be uh, very clearly visible so it will be all filled okay we can say status bar full there is a fuel level sensing and when the fuel level comes to emergency and all those things at that time the float comes to the bottom down part and at the time we can see only one or two indicators or emergency indicator in the uh, fuel indicator thing. So first thing or most important thing is fuel level sensing. So I'll be showing you what is the uh, float type of sensing. Now this float type of sensing can be resistive type and another thing I will show you is a capacitive, capacitive type level sensing. So write it down that for your exam you have to prepare these two types of level sensing. First is the resistive type or resistance connected with the float, which is actually uh, used. And another uh, type of uh, sensing of level should be the capacitive type of level sensing. So capacitive C is equal to epsilon A by D. And depending on the change in D, we can determine how much is the, uh, or so actually we are supposed to determine how much is D. We'll see that, uh, what is the capacitive type of level sensing. Then there comes fuel flow rate. Okay, in and out from the fuel tank. So overflow might happen. So in that case, all those things happen. We will see what is that. But mainly we have to study uh, the flow rate sensor or liquid flow rate sensor. That we will not be doing today, so maybe tomorrow. So there are different types of uh, flow rate sensing. So magnetic type is there, optical type is there. Uh, there can be a Hall effect type of flow rate sensor. So we will see what are the different types of flow rate sensor and in the ignition part definitely you will be seeing the flow rate first and next is sensing the fuel injection rate in the tank so definitely you will not be seeing it today we will be seeing it in the conjunction of ignition so second and third we will be seeing while we will be doing the ignition part in this module itself and fourth is testing the quality of the injected fuel in engine so flex sensor can be there that will actually find out what is the quality of uh, fuel that is being injected. So mainly we will be seeing the first thing and as far as this part of the syllabus is concerned, we will be mainly seeing what is the level uh, sensing for the fuel in the tank. And I will show you the overall uh, fuel system, uh, fuel gauge and other things. So first we will see what is the fuel gauge and then I will show you the overall uh, fuel system to the videos. So please keep on, uh, keep watching the videos and all these links will be given to you and if you are having any doubt uh, please write your doubt in the chat box how does a fuel gauge work there are two main parts to a fuel gauge the sender which measures the level of fuel in the tank and the gauge which displays that level to the driver a small float sits in your car's fuel tank the float bobs on top of the fuel. The higher the level, the higher it floats. The float is attached to a thin metal rod that scrapes up against a resistor. 
This resistor sends an electronic signal to the fuel display. The signal comes from your car's battery via a small coil. The lower the float drops, the more current the resistor sends to the fuel gauge, and the closer your gauge gets to empty. Okay, I'll just check. Uh, the present has been stopped. I'll just check. Uh, are you able to see a moving video? Please let me know, Pranita. Anita, please let me know if the video is uh, audible. How does the fuel gauge work? There Just write in the chat box if the video is uh, audible center, and display. Which measures the level of fuel in the tank and the gauge, which displays that level to the driver. A small float sits in your car's fuel tank. The float bobs on top of the fuel. The higher the level, the higher it floats. The float is attached to a thin metal rod that scrapes up against a resistor. This resistor sends an electronic signal to the fuel display. The signal comes from your car's battery via a small coil. The lower the float drops, the more current the resistor sends to the fuel gauge, and the closer your gauge gets to empty. For more great car care tips, visit uccc.co.uk. Uh, have you understood uh, this thing, fuel gauge? Please respond in the chat box or you can just let me know. Is a float type uh, understood? Okay, so it is a very simple float type of thing you can find here. So this is the when the fuel level is low at that time. This is the float. Actually, I will show you the construction and all. Uh, this is the float. It's a very simple thing which floats above the fuel. So whenever the fuel is less at that time, the float is uh, down. And whenever the uh, uh, float, when the liquid level is high, at the time flows goes above. And whenever this float is actually connected to this shaft, which is a mechanical shaft, and this shaft is again connected with a potentiometer. So that is what they have shown. The shaft is again connected with a resistive type potentiometer. So this is what is shown, a resistor. Okay. So when the float goes up at the time, maybe it is a resistor, maybe rotating clockwise. When the float goes down, maybe this uh, potentiometer was anti-clockwise and this resistor is connected to the fuel gauge or fuel indicator so which is now shown in the right side so to the fuel indicator it is now connected and depending on this uh, indication whether the float is above or below this indicator keeps on getting its reading but it's an electronic thing so uh, to run it uh, there should be a battery so battery comes from uh, whatever engine battery we are having we have seen what is a battery so that battery is actually powering this resistor so there is also a Wheatstone bridge somewhere here in the resistor so this float that is a level so how is this transducer the level of the liquid that is the height of the liquid h is converted to delta r that is a change in the resistor value and delta r is actually uh, changing uh, producing the changed voltage that is delta v uh, that delta v is actually converted to digital if it's a digital indicator or if it's an analog indicator so delta v is actually shown in the form of uh, the change in the indicator value so if it's a digital indicator it shows in digit so this output has to be converted in digital if it's an analog thing directly the current uh, proportional to the voltage is fed in this and it runs so this is a very easy thing the lower the float drops and then you can the check more current the resistor sends to the fuel gauge and the closer your gauge gets to empty 
more great car care tips, visit uccc.co.uk. Okay, so can I go for the next slide? Can I go for the next uh, video? Can I go for the next video? I think this is also audible, uh, visible. Thank you. So if it is not audible and visible, just send a message in the group. So now what I'm saying is a fuel tank. You have to remove the fuel pump from your vehicle. If you need a guide that had to do that, I'll include a link in the description box below showing the steps involved to remove the pump from your vehicle. But once you place it on the bench, you can do a quick test to see if it's working correctly. So let's get right to it. So right here we have a factory fuel pump assembly. In this case, it happens to be a Subaru. Uh, is it audible, Ranita? Please let me know in the chat box or just tell me. Now I have stopped it. Is it audible and visible? OK, thank you, Pranita. I'll go forward. I'll just run it. So this is the part, actually. This is the part which is immersed in the oil. And this part is having that float. And this part is actually the controller. So pump, fuel pump, and other things are there inside it. Navin might be knowing it. Just Unless check. you can do this test on any vehicle. So what we'll be doing is testing. The, now, before we begin, you do have to remove the fuel pump from your vehicle to involve to involve. But nevertheless, you can do this test on any vehicle. So what we'll be doing is it happens to be a Subaru, but nevertheless, you can do this test on any vehicle. So what we'll be doing is testing this. So you can see this part. You can see this part. Now before and we begin, you do it. Assembly. In this case, it happens to be a This part, this part is the float, OK? So whatever is this part, this part is the float and this black one, this actually goes up and this falls down depending on the liquid level. So whenever this part goes up, the resistance will be decreasing. That will increase the current flow. And whenever this float goes down as far as the liquid level, it will increase the resistor and decrease the current. So just check this video and you'll understand how exactly the float Super. works. But nevertheless, you can do this test on any vehicle. So what we'll be doing is testing this float sensor. Now to do that, you need to do an ohms reading, which you just grab a multimeter. You can pick up one of these for around $20 or so. You place it on the ohm setting. This is the symbol right here. It's the omega symbol. That's the symbol you want to see on your multimeter. So if you see V for volts, you don't want that. This is really for continuity because you see this symbol here. Continuity just means two points make a connection. That's all it that means. So you don't want to see that symbol. You want this guy right here. Now what we'll do, let me come in. We'll be touching two of these harness connections on top of the fuel pump assembly and we'll see a reading. And as we raise this bowl, the reading should increase, excuse me, the reading should decrease on the multimeter. So let's see what we end up with. Now, before we begin, let me just state I will come in for a different view in a moment, just so you guys can see which two terminals I'm touching here. Now, how do I know which two terminals to touch? Because I just did a little research for this specific vehicle. You know, sometimes if you do a Google image search or you go to a website specific for your vehicle, there's always a guru out there that just knows everything about your car or truck. So, um, just ask the question and someone out there will, will know the answers. Now, regarding these alligator clips, this is because I can't do two things at once. Um, you'll see a reading here in a moment. So in other words, I can't, you could just take the leads from the multimeter and touch the two terminals and you'll be fine, but there's no way I can touch the two terminals, hold them there, and then increase this to see if we have a change in the reading. So the alligator clips just make this very, very easy. That's all I have these alligator clips for. for. They just run from here directly to the leads to the multimeter, okay? Just so you guys can see this. All right, there we go. That's all they are. They're just making the connection. So we have roughly 34 ohms, which is a good reading for this vehicle. Now, as I increase or move this bowl up, this should decrease the reading. And as you can see, it's decreasing. And the top should be around uh, around 4 ohms, something like that, 3 to 4 ohms. And there you go. So this is working perfectly fine. Now, if you don't see these kind of readings, 
that, or you just don't get a reading at all. And that's a very good indication that the level sensor has to be replaced on the fuel pump assembly. Now let me pause the video for a moment. If so what we found was whenever the float is below, whenever the float is down, at that time the reading was around uh, 0.339. So at present you can check that. Uh, the when the float is down at this time the reading is around 0.4 ohm and as uh, as we are taking the thing up at the time it reduced so from sorry 33 ohm uh, whenever it is down or uh, 34 ohm and whenever the float went up it came down to almost 4 ohm so as we are taking uh, the the fuel liquid level is increasing the float is going top and resistance of the whole thing is decreasing so this is uh, H, that is the level of uh, our height of the fuel. H is getting converted to delta R. And that delta R can be very easily converted to change in resistance, change in, sorry, change in voltage, change in current. And that delta is actually fed to the uh, ADC and output of the ADC is fed, fed to the uh, indicator, digital if everything indicator. everything works correctly, that's awesome. You're in good shape. However, if it doesn't work correctly and you do have to replace the fuel level sensor, it's a pretty easy process and I'll show you the steps involved for this specific fuel pump. Doesn't work correctly. Kind of readings. Kind of read. Doesn't work correctly. So this keeps track. And then right here is the fuel level sensor. So this keeps track of how much fuel is in the fuel tank. So this would be full. And this would be empty. So to remove it, there's a little claw right here where my index finger is. You just press it in and then push up the entire the entire part here so press it in push up and there you go then we're just going to remove this and place it to the side okay so we'll place this to the side just need to route the wires where they were before Reinstall the temperature sensor on the bottom, and then you have the fuel level sensor that just clips. So what we can find is there's a temperature sensor also which is which is fitted uh, in this uh, fuel tank, and there is the level sensor. So fuel uh, temperature as well as fuel level inside this tank both are to be sensed. On the bottom, okay. Go ahead and reinstall this guy. Let's go. Let's see. And uh, this will have the new Subaru part right here. So the new gasket onto the material. So this this video is uh, done. Mainly I wanted to show you how the uh, changes, the float changes its position. Then let us see next type, which is the capacitive level, uh, capacitive level, capacitive type uh, liquid level sensing. Capacitive level sensing. To explain capacitive level sensing, we must first understand the concept of a capacitor. A capacitor is formed by two electrodes, electrically insulated from each other. The electrodes themselves must be conductive and are typically made from metal. They can be any shape, though two parallel plates are easiest to visualize. Capacitors have the ability to store energy in an electric field between its electrodes, caused when a voltage or potential is applied to the circuit. The property of capacitance relates the amount of energy stored in this field to the applied potential. By placing non-conductive material between the electrodes, the ability for the capacitor to store energy increases, and so the capacitance increases. This material between the electrodes is referred to as the dielectric. The key property of dielectric materials is known variously as dielectric constant or relative permittivity. This property is the amount of charge the material can store, defined relative to a vacuum. Air and other gases, such as fuel vapors, have values very similar to a vacuum. As a dielectric liquid is introduced between the electrodes of the capacitor, the capacitance changes progressively and liquid level can be determined. To measure variations in capacitance, electric energy flowing into and out of the electrodes is measured as the circuit potential is varied. A regular flow of energy is established by connecting the electrodes to an alternating current measurement circuit.
the electrodes, the greater the capacitance, meaning more dielectric between the electrodes. For sensor calibration, reference measurements at empty and full tank conditions must be taken. Generally, we need to know the dielectric constant of the liquid being measured to calibrate the sensor at its full condition. With the empty and full outputs established, liquid level sensing comes down to relating sensor output to these values. Capacitor plates can also be deployed as concentric tubes with the advantage of reduced interference as well as improvements in mechanical stiffness and robustness. Fully integrated electronics mean no external electronic units are required as all signal processing is managed on board. Dielectric fluctuation caused by temperature variation is managed using offset values also stored within the sensor memory. These values are typically applied during factory calibration at gill sensors. A wide range of fluids can be measured using a gill liquid level sensor, including fuels, biofuels, diesel, and oil. And by modifying internal components, the liquid level of electrically conductive substances, such as water, can be measured. Sensors are often constructed from aluminium, stainless steel, carbon fiber, or peak, or a combination thereof. This allows Gill to cater for applications from fuel tanks in Formula One race cars to oil transmission systems in mining and industrial machinery. Issues such as tank sloshing can be effectively managed using software or modifying the fluid dynamic damping features within the sensor construction itself. Okay, so this was another type of uh, liquid level sensor. Uh, I'm not saying this is fitted in the car uh, tanks because in car tanks, whatever has been found uh, so far, I have found it. It is mainly that resistive and float type of sensor. But you prepare this type of liquid level sensing also. There is a capacitive type. So what all you have to prepare from it is uh, resistive or float type uh, liquid level sensing at the fuel tank. And second thing, second sensor you have to prepare is the capacitive type level sensing. Next, uh, the four step fuel monitoring. It's a very two minute video, but very important. Just check uh, what all steps are related to uh, fuel monitoring inside a uh, vehicle. These are four modes that are explained here. is a second mode so here there's a fuel pump okay, and it is taking it to the engine and this is the fuel tank and fuel is sucked above and given to the engine by the pump right side the parameters are being given just check So whenever the vehicle is passing through a rough terrain, at that time the fuel tank, it actually uh, changes its position. So the level of the liquid actually varies, it becomes dynamic. But you cannot fool engine in that case because uh, the flow meter data is not affected by the vehicle pitch. That means heights and all the jerks and all. Smart sensing is there. So there's a fourth type, uh, the fuel level sensor is there. Calibration is not required. So the ECU knows what is the capacity of the tank and how much it is filled. So these are main four types of uh, fuel monitoring that is done inside the vehicle. Next, we will see uh, what is the inside fuel tank, the detailed view of that. So all these video links I'll be uploading So this is a fuel delivery module. 
So there is no uh, audio in this case. So there's a fuel tank here. You can see at the backdrop, there is an engine. There's a fuel tank. And inside it, see, this is the float already. You can see there's a float. And there's the fuel delivery uh, thing that is there. So please go on reading. So pressure regulator, fuel pump, sender unit, filter, swirl pot, and non-return valve. All those things are there. So as you can see, fuel is increasing at the time. Float is also is going up. And what is there inside this unit? Now it will be showing. So there is a swirl pot. This is called. So what is meant by swirl is it is opening. And then fuel pump is there inside it. So one is the uh, transmission side, another is the return side. So transmission means the fuel is sucked and given to the uh, engine. It is going. So there's a pumping action. An extra fuel might come back. So there are one inlet, one outlet. So one more video is there. I'll post that link. So there's a suction jet pump, very high rate of suction and uh, a fuel transmission. So you can see what happens in the jerk. Whenever jerk is happening at that time, what happens? The process is undisturbed. It keeps on sending the fuel. OK, so there is a CAN bus. Those who are related to uh, vehicle automation, all those things, they have heard of CAN bus. So this is the uh, CAN bus related pulse width modulation signal. So from this, uh, whatever unit you can see in the right side, uh, through the control unit of fuel pump, it uh, talks to the ECU. So what all parameters we can monitor, it is shown here. So actually, it's a motor service company. Uh, this is their product. That's why the video is produced. But it has helped us. Uh, what exactly are the uh, components and what are the connectors and all these things that is shown here. Very small videos, but very effective videos are there. So that's all from my side now. Uh, so today only we have seen 